Some of you might remember that around about this time last year, I was lucky enough to get to announce every single game that Super Rare was giving a physical release to over the coming next year or so. And as of recently, I have acquired every single game that I myself got to announce was coming to the Switch physically. 1 through 14, from games like Flame in the Flood all the way to Snake Pass, these games that I fell in love with on the eShop, I was actually able to put into my collection physically. Physically, which is also why none of these are open. Remember, <laughs> I review eShop games pretty much for a living at this point. I just like owning them in the collection. That's the whole point. And they actually just reached out to me again and asked, hey, Wanna do it one more time? And how was I gonna say no to that? So today I'm announcing another five, six, seven-ish games coming to the Switch. Most of these games, or maybe even all of them, you probably already love and you've been playing, as I've reviewed a few of them on the channel already. So whether I've talked about these games already or not, we're gonna take one more look at them today and go through all of the new games that Super Rare are giving physical releases to. Well, let me start by announcing the first game getting a physical release. And that's Rive. Rive is still one of my favorite gaming experiences I have discovered thanks to the Nintendo Switch eShop. It's a twin stick shooter platformer with fast paced addicting gameplay and great voice acting. You play in this spider vessel, creeping and crawling your way through tunnels, air ducts and big open rooms, all inside a spaceship you are trying to escape from. There are times when levels of the spaceship flood completely or you're ejected out into space, but don't worry, your spider ship can morph and adapt to any situation. And and the gameplay in all three of these environments differ greatly, but each is as fun as the last with responsive controls and stupid amounts of enemies to blow up. Oh, uh, speaking of, between the platforming death traps lying around every single corner, enemies and boss battles, this game can be extremely challenging. It's a very arcadey feeling game with the focus being mostly on aim, shoot and destroy, but it still features some pretty great level design at times with interesting gameplay mechanics. Like these zero gravity bubbles that keep you afloat during the platform. And as I mentioned earlier, it does have some really fantastic voice acting. Non-surprisingly, there is a human inside your spider ship, a rough and tough, no-nonsense brute of a man who just wants to be out of this death trap spaceship he's stuck in. However, his progress is constantly halted by a floating AI robot with nothing better to do than to screw up your day. The dialogue and banter between these two characters are a highlight of the game for me. And I love that at any moment during the conversations, you can decide to just blow up the robot mid sentence. It not only acts as a way to skip through conversations, but you also start to create your own running joke with the characters if you do it often enough. And believe me, there are times when it's hard not to blow up that smug little robot. With Rive being one of my favorite little gems on the eShop, you can imagine how excited I am that it's finally getting a physical release. And uh, I'm sure that Gary Laserballs is excited as well. He asked about a physical release about a year ago on the Rive announcement trailer and got shut down. But it's finally happening Gary Laserballs so I hope you're ready and everyone else is ready to buy Rive physically on the Nintendo Switch. Gary Laserballs, mm, man. <laughs> uh, so hi, my name is Wood and I recently made a video on YouTube about best $5 games on the Switch. Well, one of those games was Toki Tori, an old school Game Boy game that received a remaster and was super fun to play. Well, little did I know that I would be standing here just a few weeks later announcing that not only is this game getting a physical release, but it's packaged in with its sequel as well. Toki Tori 1 and 2 are on the way to your game room. So since I recently reviewed that first game, I'll leave a link down below for you to go check that out for yourself. And right now I'm going to concentrate on the sequel. Sequel. Toki Tori 2 is still a puzzle platformer just like the first game, but it's a lot more side-scrolly this time around. Which actually kind of makes sense. Even though this game was released in 2013 on Wii U, it's still a sequel to a Game Boy game, and I have to imagine if it had gotten this release way back in the day, we probably would have seen it on a system like the Super Nintendo, or maybe even the Game Boy Advance, and I bet it would have been a side-scroller then as well. So the sequel's direction here, even for 2013, was spot on. You 
have two main abilities you'll be using for most of the adventure, singing and stomping. You sing to attract creatures and enemies towards you, and you stomp to scare them away. And that might seem quite simple, but you can actually do a lot in the game with just these two abilities. And it's not a linear experience either, you can explore the world back to front, front to back as much as you like, completing puzzles and finding collectibles. It's a very chilled out gaming experience. Unlike Rive, you probably won't find yourself in intense boss fights constantly dying and falling back on trial and error gameplay. However, the difficulty in Toki Tori 2 starts to ramp up as the puzzles become more challenging, especially in some later levels. Oh, and speaking of Rive, both these games were actually made by the same developer, Two Tribes, so that's how you know that this one is good too. The next game that Super Rare is plucking out of the eShop digital space and giving a hard copy physical release to is Darkseid Detective. Finally, another cool point and click game gets a physical release on Switch. These are few and far between, so as a fan of the genre, I'll take them where I can get them. All good point and clicks need good stories to go with them, and the Darkseid Detective not only has good stories, but spooky ones at that. I mean, the developer's name is Spooky Doorway, so what do you expect? It's gonna be spooky. You play as Detective Francis McQueen, who leads the underfunded Darkseid Division and must investigate evil occurrences in Twin Lakes City. And for those playing at home, yes, Twin Lakes is a direct reference to Twin Peaks. As McQueen, you investigate strange going-ons around the city. It doesn't really have one big overarching story, rather it's a bunch of short stories, kind of like picking up six separate creepy Goosebump books and reading them all at once. Each part is different, but still equally engaging and creepy. It also kind of feeds back into the Twin Peaks reference, with every part being like a short episode of a creepy TV show. Honestly, the creepiest thing about this game might be the artwork hanging up on that wall. What are those things? From ghosts to monsters, each case feels quite different and they're fun to solve, but for me, the real enjoyment came from the writing and the sense of humor with loads of pop culture references. And if you already love the genre, then you should really add this one to your collection. This little guy has been screaming through this whole video. He's downstairs playing with his little stuffed mouse. So if you've heard him yipping away in the video, I apologize. What is with you today? You're so hyperactive. All right, go, go scream some more. I know a lot of you are really gonna love this next one. Earthlock is getting a physical release. I can't ever talk about Earthlock without first giving a little background on how this game came to be. Initially, this game was released in 2016, after which the devs immediately began work on the sequel, Earthlock 2. However, the reviews of their newly released game started coming in as very mixed. The overall opinion seemed to be that people enjoyed the game, but it was lacking in a lot of areas. But the team behind Earthlock, Snowcastle Games, actually agreed with the reviews they were receiving and decided they just couldn't leave their creation like that and immediately began work on fixing and remastering Earthlock. Massively changing the story and adding in tons of new content such as side quests, mini games, new scenes and characters, better animation, improved cutscenes, huge performance optimization. They even gave the new version of the game out for free to anyone who had already bought the previous version of the game and do I need to go on? This story and any like it will never cease to amaze me. Sometimes it's hard to even accept criticism towards something you have made, no matter what that something is. But to not only accept the issues it may have, but to go back and put in the effort to make it better, to make it something you're truly proud of. It goes to show the level of passion and love Snowcastle Games has for Earthlock. And that passion really shines even brighter in this remastered version, which is so much better. The game has been on the Switch's eShop for a while, so if you haven't had a chance to grab it yet, or you love it so much you want it physical, now is your chance. It's just one of those games that you know will look great in the collection. The art style and visuals are similar to late 90s RPGs, and the turn-based combat has you controlling several different characters while switching their stances and using a large array of abilities and attacks. If you're looking for your next RPG fix and you haven't played Earthlock yet, start setting aside some spare cash for when Super Super Rare releases this game physically. So game number five, if you're not counting Toki Tori 1 and 2 as two games, game number five is Wolverblade. But after I've talked about this physical release, there's actually one more. A secret one, a number six, which you can pick up today. But before I get to that, let's talk about the amazing beat-em-up 
Wolverblade. I guess that means the beat em ups YouTube channel is actually talking about a beat em up for once. It's like never happens. In Wolverblade, you start by picking one of three characters, each with their own abilities and attributes. Then you, uh, uh start beating up people. I mean, it's a beat em up. Hack and slash your way through levels, mincing up enemies and smashing on walls of watchtowers. Typically with an intense boss battle to be found at the end of every level. The art style and gameplay actually reminds me of a game called Shank, if anyone remembers that game from the last generation. Speaking of the visuals, they look pretty great to start with, but some of the areas throughout the adventure really caught me by surprise on how great they really looked. The combat's pretty straightforward, there are a few different moves you can pull off to mess up enemy days, but honestly, Wolverblade for me is a back to the basics beat em up. It took me back to the time of playing games like Streets of Rage. 2 and Final Fight. And just like those games, Wolverblade is even better when you play it in co-op. Trust me, you're gonna want an ally by your side when all of these enemies start piling up on the screen. It can get overwhelming. Another really great game that I can't wait to get physical. Let's get physical. Physical. And the game that Super Rare is giving a physical release to that you can go and buy right now by checking that link in my description is... Joe Dever's Lone Wolf. Again, this one just released today, so grab it while you still can. I honestly can't believe that I not only managed to squeeze in one Goosebump book reference into this video, but I'm about to do it again. You know, my favorite Goosebump books were the Choose Your Own Adventure ones. I mean, I sucked at them, but I'd never read or played anything quite like them before, and I loved it. So I wish I had found Joe Dever's books back in the day. He released a series called Lone Wolf that played the same way as a reading choose your own adventure game. Well, I, I mean, at least now I don't have to read them because I can literally play them in video game form on my Switch. And thanks to Super Rare, I can own it physically as well. So it's all kind of like full circle. The game plays out similar to the books where you read the adventure as normal, making your choices as you go. But when you get to the battle parts, you actually get to play them out in turn-based RPG combat form. It's a really interesting concept, and in many ways, it really works. Choose between ranged weapons, melee attacks, Kai powers, or defending. And once you've decided, the battle, of course, isn't over. To successfully attack or defend, you need to be fast on the draw with some quick time events. And I actually like this as it adds in an extra challenge to the battles. And then, when the battles are done being fought, you go back to deciding your own adventure. It's really interesting to see a choose your own adventure book come to life. And with Joe Dever's brilliant writing, this game also manages to come to life. So if you're a hoarder of games, just, just like I am, to the point where I won't even open them because I've already played them, you're gonna want to at least bookmark Super Rare Games' website. You can find the link in the description below. Remember, Joe Dever's Lone Wolf just released, and then all the other games I talked about today are getting physical releases through Super Rare at some point in the foreseeable future. Alright guys, if you like this video or you're new around here, make sure you, uh, Hair flip all over that subscribe button as well as hit the like button while you're going down there Click or tap on anything you see on the screen right now because it would really help me out And sorry if I seem a little tired or out of it in this video I was kind of up all night hanging out with boogie at gearbox here in uh, Frisco, Texas It was kind of a it was kind of a really cool night, but I'm also kind of really tired